Well, I just want to give a quick update on the food plot here. I'm out here doing some work. I'm going to sandblast that grain drill and paint it, but I took a walk around here and everything's looking really nice. So I figured I'd show you what it looks like here in October after quite a few frosts in Western PA. We're north of 80, Northwestern PA. This is the white clover. You can see with the exclusion cage that the deer are still hitting it pretty good. And you can see a lot of these are nipped off. You can see that or not, but you can see the stems there. But it looks really nice. I never planted the clover. I've never planted clover in the spring and it was challenging to say the least. But now we've got a real nice, real nice lush stand of white clover, about an acre in size. Deer have been hitting it all fall. Even whenever I had my late planted beans, they were still in here just as much, almost. But hands down, I think they like the clover right now more than anything. Well, no, they like the beans. Anyhow, this one here, half of an acre of brassicas, and they didn't turn out very well at all. My, the soil, we've got some major soil issues. I can't get anything to grow here, not even oats. Of course, we had a drought when I was doing that, but even then, when we had rain, I couldn't get the oats to grow. And I think I took a soil sample in July and it was somewhere around, the pH was somewhere in the fours, in the high fours. Oh, that's terrible. So this didn't turn out all that great. This one down here though, this is a half of an acre of the late planted beans from July. And then uh, the end of July, early July beans, late July, I planted the turnips and uh, they're looking good down here, especially. Most of these are baseball size or so. The um, seed rate really has everything to do with that. Um, you can put it on way too heavy like over there and they're no bigger than a golf ball. Well, even though the soil is pretty poor, I mean, I'm only 12 feet away, but these, these look pretty nice. You can see they're all getting browsed on the top, on the greens, and they've been browsed on ever since they started coming up. I watched them from the ground blind. Here's daikon radish, same thing. They have it chewed right off, nice size. Got a couple of those right here. Radish and a turnip. So this turned out really nice. I like this plot. It's probably my favorite one for, for late summer, early fall, especially if you wanted to hunt over it, which I'm just planting them. I just like to grow things and watch deer come in and eat what I grow. And I like playing on the tractor. So anyhow, this here, half acre of the wildlife game sorghum turned out really nice aside from some of the grasses there, but the deer love it. You can see this path here. They're going in and out of there. I'm sure they're bedding in there, but that's a nice stand. I ended up using 2,4-D to control all the broadleaf weeds. And since sorghum's a grass like corn, you can't use the clethodum. So I'll do a little more research and see what I can do. If I can use like a pre-emergence, because that would make things a lot better. But all I did was spray 2,4-D about six weeks after, and it took care of all the goldenrod and the ragweed that were coming up. This over here, these are just some cereal grains. We have some, where I'm walking right now, is winter rye. And against the woods there, we're about halfway over, starts winter wheat. Can't really see much of a difference now. It all looks pretty much the same which is not all that great. It's been purplish the entire time. And this spot here is very wet, low pH. It was real wet in the spring when I tried to lime it. So I, I couldn't even get the tractor in here to lime this area where I would have been stuck and in a lot of trouble. So I never even attempted it. But that's what's growing here. Nothing too spectacular, but it gave me an excuse to come out and plow and disc and run the planter. This here is a half acre of oats. I think we planted this at 300 pounds per acre. We also have crimson clover in here. And being this far north in Pennsylvania, I'm really not sure if it's gonna make the, if the crimson clover is gonna make it through the winter. I know the oats won't, but deer prefer oats over rye and wheat. And it's still looking really nice and the deer are loving it. So, I mean, if you were planting it to hunt over or kill, kill a deer over, I don't see why you wouldn't plant it in Pennsylvania. I know it's going to die, but I mean, the wheat and the rye doesn't look all that great either. So anyhow, I have the crimson clover in here. 
Let me see if I can find some. Well, that's not good. Okay. Now I know, I know it's growing. I see it. Yeah, you can kind of see it. I was trying to find a nice little cluster, but anyhow, the deer do enjoy the oats. You can see those ones are nipped off. And on the other end, I was looking earlier, and there's quite a few that are nipped off. You can see that's nipped. So they're enjoying the oats. Half of an acre, which is plenty for when you're planting 150 pounds on it. Now this is my corn that I broadcasted by hand and I just disked it in with the three point disc and it turned out pretty nice. There's some thick spots, thin spots, destroyed spots. We have, some, we have a raccoon problem and a few other things, but either way, the thick spots, the ears are pretty small. Like you can see that when there's pretty small, we don't have to open him up. And uh, yeah, we can tell it was pretty small. But then he come into these other spots here where it's not so thick. And it looks, looks a whole lot better. Now I'd say it's, I'd say 70% is open with a decent size ears, 30% thick, small ears. It's an acre, it's, it's relatively small for the deer herd that we have, but we'll see. I'm sure they're gonna love it here come December, January, February, February, when, especially if we get some snow, this will all be covered up. If we get a foot of snow, the only thing visible is gonna be my sorghum, the corn, and then the, be the beans, of course, and I'll show you those right now. That'll be our last one. And they look really nice. Of course, all the leaves are off. And they've yellowed, brown, fallen off. The deer just never let up on them and they still haven't. But the fence saved it. And you can see here the one plant I counted. Now it was out on the edge, so I'm not gonna lie to myself. I counted 69 pods on one of them. Some of these here though, you know there's not gonna be 69 pods. But here's a plant. Oops. And there's quite a few on there until you get up there. Now I wonder why they didn't eat that little guy. But they look good. Plenty of food in here for the winter. And uh, we'll see how it goes here in a month or two. We might get us, well, of course, the way this weather's going, it may never snow this winter. It's gonna be in the 70s next week here again, which is crazy for the end of October. But food plot looks good. I've learned a lot this year in this little 10 acre field. I know a lot of changes that we're gonna make next year. I spent a lot of time planning this out over the winter. I didn't just come in here and start spreading seed willy nilly. I did try to plant it the best I could with field sizes. Like, I don't, I don't know how many, of course the beans are gonna eat them. I didn't know how big to make the corn field versus the soybean field. So I made basically half of this field is soybean. And then I made a small section that was corn. And then there's a lot of other things that I wanted to do, like the sunflowers. And I definitely wanted sorghum and of course buckwheat. So. Ideally, yeah, maybe five acres of beans and four or five acres of corn, but then, I'm, then I can't do anything else and I like to do different you know, food plot varieties. So that's what I ended up with. We'll see how it works out. The soybeans, if they weren't fenced in, they would have never made it anyhow. Um, luckily next year now, there's a field, like I said, on the other side of these trees, there's another field over there and it's only a few acres, but we're gonna plant that whole thing in corn next year. So that'll help out tremendously. That will open up that back corner and we'll see what we can do here. But all in all, it turned out really good. Like I said, I did a lot of planning with this, drawing up little drawings and whatnot and mapping it out on my app, on that Onyx map and, you know, and came out here and put little flags where it showed on my on my app and uh and it actually turned out very close to what i had envisioned 
that I only had a few hiccups along the way. And uh, next year, it's just gonna be that much easier. So we'll see here what it looks like in a month or two. And uh, I'm gonna head out, sandblast that grain drill and paint it and do some other work here. So thanks a lot for watching, we'll see you.